the Lord. Welcome to Sunday School. The lesson to be treated today is lesson 21 and the topic is alternative spirituality. The topic is alternative spirituality. Our Bible passage is seen in the book of Isaiah chapter 47 verse 13 to 14. Let us pray. Father, we want to thank you Ancient of days, I am that I am. We give you glory, we give you honor, we give you praise. Blessed be thy name, O Lord, in Jesus' name. Father, we pray that today you open our understanding in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. And we can also say this opening prayer together. Let's say, Father, help me not to be ignorant of the tricks and gimmicks of the devil in the name of Jesus. Father, help me not to be ignorant of the tricks and the gimmicks of the devil in the mighty name of Jesus. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, today's Bible passage can be found in the book of Isaiah 47, verse 13 to 14. Isaiah chapter 47, verse 13 to 14. I read, Thou hast wearied in the multitude of thy counsels. Let now the astrologers, the stargazers, the monthly procrastinators stand up and save thee from these things that shall come upon thee. Behold, they shall be as stumble, the fire shall burn them, they shall not deliver themselves from the power of the flame. There shall not be a coal to warm at no fire to see it before heat. This is the fall of Babylonians and the cause the Lord God pronounced on them. Our memory verse shall be found in the book of Leviticus chapter 19 verse 31. Leviticus chapter 19 verse 31. I read, Regard not them that are familiar spirits, neither seek after wizards to be defied by them, I am the Lord your God. I am the Lord your God. The lesson introduction. Alternative spirituality is a loosely defined term generally used to describe spiritual practices that do not conform to true Christianity. It is largely characterized by some spiritual practices and rituals that are often chosen by the participants to fit their individualness. Alternative spirituality does not conform with Christianity in any way. And we should not practice it because it usually comes with rituals. It usually comes with rituals. In this lesson, we shall attempt to highlight some of them and scripturally view what our perspective should be as a believer. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Lesson outline one says, Alternative spirituality practices. Alternative spirituality practices. And the second lesson outline says, Scriptural perspectives. Scriptural perspectives. We'll be looking at the first lesson outline, which says, Alternative spirituality practices. Astrology and the zodiac is the interpretation of an assumed influence the starry holes and planets, exact on human destiny, according to the Bible passage we just read. According to astrology, the sign you were born under, like Aquarius species and so on, impacts your destiny. The astrologers believe that which of the signs you were born under will determine what become of you in the future. Living house, what God has for you, or the purpose of God for your life. Then we have the crystal sphere. 
is the belief that a precious stone has an inherent power that can be used to man's benefit, like attracting wealth, rekindling romance, and wedding off evil or bad energy does bring in good luck. This one is like a stone that people that have belief in it believe that it can attract good things to them. It can bring them good luck. Rather than believing in God that created all things, they are believing in a stone, Christopher, that by using this stone, it will weigh off evil from them and thereby attaching good luck to them. The Lord will deliver us in the name of Jesus. Then we have necromancy. It's the conjuring of the spirit of the dead to magically reveal the future or influence the course of events. In the Bible, necromancy is also called divination, sorcery, and spiritism. Just like when King Saul went to meet the prophets, that it should help him to ask what's become of him. That is a divination. It is not expected of us to meet with anybody to tell us what our future, what, what our future holds for us, except from God that holds the future. All these things are not to be found among Christians because they come with rituals. They are not to be found among Christians. In 2 Kings chapter 17, verse 17, and they caused their sons and their daughters to pass through the fire and use divination and enchantment, and sold themselves to do evil in the sight of the Lord, to provoke him to hunger. When you are visiting all these things, you are provoking God to hunger. That means you are telling God that he, is not, he doesn't have power over your life, that he's not your savior, that you don't, you don't believe in his power. That is why you are looking for an alternative. This one should not be found among Christians. It should not be found in our midst. Because doing so, you are incurring God's anger. May we never incur God's anger over our lives in the name of Jesus. Then, others practices include palm reading, visiting false prophets, spiritual basing. There are some people that in the name of Christianity are falling under this category. They will go to a prophet, they will be telling them, do this, do that. Things that cannot be found in the Bible. Anything that you are asked to do from anybody that is not according to what is in the Bible, we should not do it. We should not do it. We should desist from it. It is not from God. When they said, okay, before this problem can be solved, you have to kill a ram and put the blood on your head and do this, do that with it. You should know that it is not from God. Only, only prayer and fasting. Because the Bible says, without fasting and prayer, these miracle things, these wonders cannot be done. So we should believe in God and not in human being, not in prophets that will give us what is not according to the word of God. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Playing some seemingly harmless games designed to initiate people into divination. Some people these days, they just go to the internet. There are some websites on the internet that when you log on to it, you will think you are playing games, but you are actually being initiated because of some things they will be telling you. And if you do it, you will be finally initiated to the courts, to the courts, to the courts, courts people. And the visiting website that promise to guide and reveal destiny to all suspensing victims. There are some people that when they go to some websites, you know, they will start telling you things that has happened to you before. And now, if you want to hear more about your future, they will ask you to type or tell them the name of your mother. By the time you tell them the name of your mother, they will start telling you what will happen to you in the future. Only God knows our future as Christians. Yes, they might have power. They might tell you what has happened to you before. They, they might have such power. But as Christians, it's not of us to have believed in them. We should not believe in it. We should not even find ourselves in, our, in their midst. We should not have ourselves in their midst. Then use of perfumes and cosmetics, capable of bringing good luck or wedding of bad luck, using of charms, amulets, and talisman. All these things are not to be used by Christians. We should go away from it. They are not of God. 
I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. The second lesson at night says, scriptural perspectives. Astrology, crystal sphere, as well as necromancy, a form of divination expressly detestable and forbidden in the, in the scripture. God forbid it. We should not do it. Stars, along with the sun and moon, were given for signs and seasons. God created all these things for signs and seasons, for us to know the day from the night, not for us to be allowing it to tell us about our future, not for us to be consulting them. No, they are, God has reason, the reason why he has created all these things. The Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. To worship the Sariot is a clear violation of God's law. Worshiping of Sariot, God does not want it. He did not want it. He don't want us to practice it at all. The royal astrologers of the Babylonian courts were put to shame by God's prophet, and that is the prophet Daniel. In Daniel chapter 2, verse 27. Daniel 2, 27. And Daniel answered in the presence of the king and said, The secrets which the king had demanded cannot the wise men, the astrologers, the magicians, the soothsayer, shew unto the king, because they cannot see. Only God knows the future. Only God can tell us the true things that we want to know. He was asking him that can't they tell the king what they have seen or what's the, the dream of the, of, the, of the king. You know, the king had a dream and he could not even remember. That was the problem. He has to call on all those astrologers, all the, all the stereos, that they must tell him the dream. They could not. They could not. But because our God is the one that holds the future, is the one that has everything in his hands, he was the one that can reveal things to us. And he revealed it to Daniel. He revealed this to who? To Daniel. And he interpreted it. To, he told him the dream and also interpreted the dreams unto the king. Then our wisdom comes from God, not the dead. Our wisdom comes from God and not the dead. Those people that are going to meet with the, the, to, to the divina div uh, to divinations, that, that they should tell them about the future. They want to know. They are talking to them. We are not to do that. Our future, the wisdom of God is from God, not from the dead. Only God gives wisdom. He will ask wisdom. Let him ask him that gives it. We should not go to them and be asking them of our future. Let us ask God in, with our fasting and prayer, and he will reveal it to us in the name of Jesus. Those who are dead are dead. Either they go to heaven or to rest, or either they go to heaven to rest, or to hell for condemnation. Either the dead goes to heaven to rest, or to hell for condemnation. We should not be deceived by those things that we are hearing outside. That today, that somebody that have died, they saw him in another place, living. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. All these things are the deceit from the pits of hell. The Lord will deliver us in the name of Jesus. Anything outside this is the conjuring of demonic spirits. Conjuring of demonic spirits. That is what they call reincarnation. Anything that seeks to manipulate the spirit world can be categorized as witchcraft. It can be categorized as witchcraft. Witchcraft is named along with idolatry as ungodly behavior. May we not be found in this category in the name of Jesus. All the aforementioned practices involve demonic manipulations. When you practice all these things, they open one to practices of demonic attack. You will be attacked by the devil because there is an opening in your, in your life that we attract the devil. Why? You confront yourself with all those things. It is worshipping created things rather than the creator. When you do all these things, bowing down for stars, reaching out to divinators, you are worshipping the created things rather than the creator, which is our God Almighty. He's the only one to be worshipped. God is only one to be worshipped. He's the, the creator of the whole universe. The word of God is and must remain our guide throughout our life. The word of God is, must remain our guide. Anything outside the word of God, we should not do it. We should not do it. We should only do whatever that is a, a conduct with the word of God. Anything not in a conduct with the word of God, we should not do it. I pray the Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. In conclusion, every spirituality outside the will of Christ is false and demonic. It should not be embraced by true Christians. Let us pray. Let's say, Father, 
I come out of every ungodly and satanic spiritual practices in the name of Jesus. I come out of every ungodly and satanic spiritual practices in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For in Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. Amen. We give it all. We give you all the praise. To you be all the praise. Jehovah Jireh, we give you all the praise. To you be all the praise. Jehovah Jireh, to you be all the praise. We give you all the praise. Jehovah Jireh, we give you all the praise. To you be all the praise. Jehovah. We give you all the praise. Jehovah Jireh, we give you all the praise. We give you. To you be all the praise. Say Jehovah Jireh. Jehovah Jireh, we give you all the praise. We give you all the praise. To you be all the praise. To you be all the praise. Jehovah Jireh, we give you all the praise. To you. To you be all the praise. I said Jehovah Jireh, we give you all the praise. To you be all the praise. Jehovah Jireh, we give you all the praise. Yeah, to you be all the praise. Jehovah Jireh, we give you all the praise. To you be all the praise. Jehovah Jireh, we give you all the praise. To you be all the praise. Somebody say, Jehovah Jireh, we give you all the praise. To you. Lord, you are good and your mercy is forever. Hallelujah. Lord, you are good and your mercy is forever. Hallelujah. Lord, you are good and your mercy is forever. Hallelujah. Lord, you are good and your mercy is forever. Hallelujah. I say, Lord, you are
want to give glory to God for bringing us into another Sunday, the third Sunday in the month of January. And we want us to sing this song in the book of Psalms 107. It's a song that we all know. Oh, that man who praise the Lord. Oh, that man we praise the Lord. For his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men, 
to the children of men, for his goodness and for his wonderful works. To somebody like me, to somebody like me, he has broken the chains of brass and cut the iron up the sunder. He has broken the gate of brass and cut the bars of fire asunder. I want us to begin to appreciate the Almighty God, the one who has kept us alive that we are in his presence again. We are in the sanctuary. We are not in the mortuary. Let's appreciate him. He's a faithful God. Thank him for his loving kindness. Thank him for all the benefits he has rolled into your life, into your family. Appreciate the almighty God for his protection, for daily provision. Let's magnify him. He's a loving father. Let's appreciate him. He has kept us. Even in his love, he has not allowed us to backslid. Let's appreciate him that we are in his presence, singing praises unto him. Thank God for good earth. Thank God for provision, for protecting your family, for being with the church of God. Thank God for the life of our daddy and our mommy, the general overseer of RCCG. Appreciate God for the strength of God upon their lives. At the old age, God is still manifesting in their lives. Thank God for the strength, the inner strength, the spiritual strength, even for financial strength to meet with all the needs. They travel here and there. God is using them mightily for his work. Let's appreciate God in the life of this, our daddy and our mommy. They are great treasures in the hand of God and, in, and unto us. They are mighty vessels in the hand of the almighty God. Let's thank God for them. Father, we appreciate you. We cannot thank you enough for all that you are doing for us in RCCG and what you are doing in our families and what you are doing in the lives of our daddy and our mommy. We return all glory to you. Thank you for your church that is marching on and you have not allowed the gate of hell to prevail. We appreciate you, O oh God, for keeping us even to this third Sunday in the month of January, it could only be you. Thank you for meeting with our, all our needs as families. We know what is going on in the nation, but God, you are faithful. We magnify your name. To you be glory, Lord. To you be honor. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. I want us to talk to God that anything in your life that will not allow you to see yourself in the word of God today that the almighty God will remove. Either pride of grace that uh, I, I know, I know what, what our daddy is going to say. Just tell God that today, wash me, give me a new heart, purify my life, sanctify my life, have mercy on me. I want to be blessed. I don't want to go the same way I have come into the presence of God. I want the word, word of God to fish me out and to do the correction and give me the grace to restitute my ways, to do the right thing, to please God, the grace to please God, the, the grace that I need to move forward, not to do eye service, the grace to do the right thing, and that everything that will hinder me, everything that has to do with Achan in my life, that God Almighty will move them away. We remove them and destroy them completely. Anything that will obstruct my way, anything that will not allow me to see you, that will not allow me to end well, Father, let the blood of Jesus flush it away from my system. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Everlasting Father, we thank you once again. We thank you for your mercies that endure forever. Thank you, Lord, King of glory, for the life of our daddy whom you have been using for us. Thank you for your strength. Thank you for the grace. Thank you, Lord, for the word of life that you have opened unto him, for the divine revelation you have given unto him. All these things we are hearing, we cannot see on the internet. It, it, it has been you in the life of our daddy. We appreciate you. 
to you be glory, Lord, in Jesus' name. We are here before you, O God of history. Please feed us again this morning. We pray you will strengthen our daddy. You will empower him in the mighty name of Jesus. As he speaks the word, let the word, O God, destroy everything that has to do with Achan in our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus. Purify our lives, O God. Help us to live holy because you are a holy God. And for us to see you on the last day, we must be holy. Lord, help us to live holy. Every bitterness, every unforgiven spirit in our lives, anything that has to do with sin, let the blood of Jesus flush them out and prepare us for the rapture. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your name, O God. We pray, Lord, that at the end of today, we will return all glory to you. And the world will meet with faith in our heart. And you will give us the grace to be doers of the world, not hearers alone. Thank you, Father, for in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Ah, praise the name of the Lord. We are so thankful to God for the word that has been coming to our way. And we appreciate that God didn't withhold. He didn't hold back from telling us the truth. I like um, what Jesus said in John chapter 17, verse 17. John 17, 17 says, sanctify them. I mean, in the truth, your word is truth. You will know what God wants you to do when you hear the truth. Many a time, the word comes so, so powerfully that you feel uncomfortable. But it's for our good. And thank God for raising a voice, the voice of uh, holiness in our generation to be able to speak to us and that every subject that we need to know God keep uh, sending those words to us. The word is also coming our way today and God has loaded our father in the Lord who will be speaking to us. Please get set to wherever you are, whether you, the, you are in the church or you are in your house or in the office. Just get ready to take in the word because the series that our father has been treating with us is a very powerful one because when the heaven is open, every good blessing, truth that is, that is even bitter will come your way. And I know the word of God that heals, that comforts, that chastises, and that embraces that word is coming. So get settled as uh, Pastor Kule Ajayi will bring a daddy to dish out the word for us. The Lord bless you.
Let us pray. Blessed be the name of the Lord. He is worthy to be praised and adored. So we lift up holy hands in one accord. Singing, Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Holy, holy is the name of the Lord. He is worthy to be praised and adored. So we lift up holy hands in one accord. Singing, holy is the name, holy is the name, holy is the name of the Lord. Jesus, Jesus is the name of the Lord. He is worthy to be praised and adored. So we lift up holy hands in one accord, singing, Jesus is the name, Jesus is the name, Jesus is the name of the Lord. King of kings and Lord of lords, the one who is called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. The Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the ending. The one who is, the one who was, the one who is to come, the Almighty. We worship you. We adore you. We thank you for all you've done for us already in the new year. We thank you for what we are yet to do. Please accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Even today, as we gather together at your feet again to learn, please send your word to us and let your word bring healings to all of us. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. We're moving on to part 36 in our study that where we are using Joshua as our illustration for someone for whom the heaven opens. And we, we, we were discussing in details what and what who represent a kind in our lives before because we have emphasized that a kind must die. That anything at all in our lives that could lead us into trouble as we journey to our spiritual promised land must be thoroughly dealt with. And last Sunday, we looked at Joshua chapter 7, from verse 19 to 21. And I'm going to read that again as we continue with our discussion on Achan. Joshua chapter 7, from verse 19 to 21. And Joshua said unto Achan, my son, give, I pray thee, glory to the Lord God of Israel, and make confession unto him, and tell me now what thou hast done. Hide it not from me. And Achan answered Joshua and said, Indeed, I have sinned against the Lord God of Israel, and thus and thus have I done. When I saw 
among the spoils, a good Babylonish, Babylonish garment, and 200 shekels of silver, and a wedge of gold of 50 shekels weight. Then I coveted them and took them. And behold, they are hid in the earth in the midst of my tent, and the silver under it. He saw. That's what led to our discussion about the role of the eyes in our journey to our promised land. And then he took. So today we'll be talking about the role of the hands in our journey to the promised land. He said, I saw, and then I coveted, and then I took. The Bible is very, very specific when it comes to the issue of covetousness. In Luke chapter 7, chapter 12, verse 15, Luke chapter 12, verse 15, the Lord said, A man's life does not consist in the abundance of the things he possesses. Your life, the value of your life is not determined by how much you have. How great you are is not determined by how many cars you have, how many houses how much money you have in the bank, how many dresses you have. That's not what determines your greatness. As a matter of fact, I'm sure some people must be frustrated because they have so much and there's no way of telling the people, this is how much I have in the bank. Some people, if it were possible, would like to have a way of writing, maybe on their forehead, this man is a billionaire. No. What makes you great? What makes you important? What makes you a man or woman of value is not determined by the abundance of the things you have. Covetousness is a killer. You want to have everything your neighbor has that could lead you into some things you would never have dreamt you could do. The only thing that the Bible gives you permission to covet, according to 1 Corinthians Chapter 12, verse 31, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 31, is the best of spiritual gifts. The Bible says you are to convert earnestly the best spiritual gifts. If you say, ah, God, I want to have the ability to raise the dead. I want to have the ability to make the lame walk. I want to have the ability to make the blind see. Oh, God will keep on saying amen. Ask for more. You are allowed to covet. You are advised to covet earnestly the best gifts. Because these are the things that are of value. These are the things that will help you on your journey to eternal life. In heaven. But now let us consider briefly the role of the hands. Because this man said, When I saw, then I took. You know, in Genesis chapter 3, verse 6, 
Genesis chapter 3, verse 6. In the original scene, it was after Esau saw that she took. Genesis 3, verse 6. He said, <laughs> when the woman saw that the fruit was good, pleasant to the eyes, then she took. You know, there is a statement of the wise. They said the one who is fond of toying with the leaves will reach for the fruit at last. You keep on admiring the leaves. One day, you will reach for the fruit. The hand can bring in death to the owner. In Second Kings chapter four, verse thirty-eight to forty-one. Second Kings chapter four, from verse thirty-eight to forty-one. The sons of the prophet were sitting before Elisha. And he said they should prepare food for them. And one zealous fellow went to the field to go and gather additional fruits to put into the food. And she and he brought in poison. You know. When we say to people who jump from one church to another, there is the danger that you might bring in poison from outside. And the poison you bring in might not only be there to kill you, it might be there to kill others with you. Be careful what you touch with your hand. Psalm 105, verse 15. Psalm 105, verse 15 gave a great warning that has to do with how you use your hands. He said, Touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. When you read some first Samuel chapter twenty four from verse one to five, first Samuel twenty four from verse one to five, in case you think that that is only uh, that has only spiritual implication, nothing physical, you will discover that when David had an opportunity to kill King Saul, he refused to kill him. He said, "No, it's the anointed of God." But I will cut a little piece of his dress. Just a little piece. The Bible said after he cut that little piece, he had a heart attack. The, his heart smote him. That's what the Bible says. The heart smote him. Because he used his hand to cut a little bit of the dress of a man of God. Oh, yes, he's uh, a backsliding king. Oh, yes, he, God has uh, forsaken him, but the anointing was still there. Be careful how you treat the man of God. Be careful how you handle the man of God. Now, the Bible says again and again and again, touch not the unclean. Watch what to do with your hand. In 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17, 2 Corinthians 6, verse 17, says, anything unclean, don't touch. Why? Because if you touch the unclean, you defile yourself. How 
important is your hand? How important is what you touch with your hand? Why don't we learn a lesson from what happened during the coronavirus epidemic or pandemic? What was the emphasis throughout that period? It was your hand. Wash your hand. Use sanitizers on your hand. They did not ask you to use sanitizer for your face. They simply say, cover your face. But when it comes to your hand, oh, you shake hand with somebody, you must use sanitizer because they know that the greatest way for the enemy to catch you might be through your hands. Watch your hands. The Bible says in Psalm 24, from verse 3 to 5, Psalm 24, from verse 3 to 5, he says, "Ah, you want to go to the presence of God? He said, your priority must be clean hands. Number f- one of all the conditions for those who will go to the presence of God is clean hands. That's why those of you who are true children of God, be careful what you do with your hand in your place of work. Because whether you know it or not, God is watching. God is keeping a record. That's why when we were talking about restitution, you must learn to restitute everything you have taken that is not yours. Everything you have Possessed that should not belong to you. Because what you do with your hand can determine how far you will go. That's why if you had stolen money from your place of work, you must restitute, you must restitute. If you have taken what is not yours, you must restitute. I told you the story before. When I was a lecturer at the University of Lagos, because of my position in the the department, we, we, we had envelopes and uh, Sheets that when we want to write sufficient something, envelopes to put them in, etc., etc. And I wrote a letter, personal letter. And I stretched forth my hand to take one of the envelopes to post the letter in. And the Almighty God said, Stop it. That envelope is for official letters, not for personal letters. And I said to the Almighty God, how much is an envelope? And he said to me, if you know an envelope is that cheap, go and buy your own envelope. Because many of you know, you can see the glory, and I thank God for the glory of God in my life. And I'm praying for all of you, my children, because you are the one I'm talking to, especially today. In the name that's above every other name, you'll be greater than I. Amen. But if you see the glory, you must know the story. The God we are dealing with is a holy God. And the wife he wants to marry must be a wife without spot, without wrinkle, without any blemish. 
If you have some restitution that you haven't made, go ahead and make them. If you think you have done certain things that nobody knows, nobody sees, but what, what about God? He knows. He sees. He's keeping records. And yet, the hands are a very precious part of the body. If you use your hand right, it can bring in your miracle. For example, in Mark chapter 5, from verse 25 to 34, Mark 5, 25 to 34, the woman with the issue of blood said, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, the hand there, If I can just touch the hem of his garment. He didn't say, if I can just tear (laughs) his garment. You remember? King Saul tore the garment of Samuel. And Samuel said to him, the kingdom is torn away from you. The woman with the issue of blood touched. And as she made contact with her hand, with the one carrying the power that made heaven and earth, she got a healing. I'm praying for those of you who need a miracle today, that by faith, your hand, we touch the hem of the garment of Jesus Christ. In John chapter 11, from verse 39 to 43, John 11, from 39 to 43, when Jesus Christ came to the tomb of Lazarus, he asked the men who stood by to roll away the stones. You need hands to roll away stones. They use their hands to do what human beings can do, and then they open the way for the Almighty God to do what He alone can do. Occasionally, the Almighty God will give you an opportunity to use your hands to prepare the way for a miracle that he wants to perform in your life. For example, when we come to the convention, we always say that those of you who are around, you must pick up every dirt that you see on the floor. And we always add, as you are keeping the house of the Lord clean, He will keep your life clean. And some of us will say, Well, I'm too big to bend down to pick any dirt. You don't know what you are missing. Your hands can prepare the way for the miracle of the Almighty God to come in. Use your hand correctly and you will get a reward from the Almighty God. Consider Second Kings chapter 2 from verse 9 to 15. Second Kings 2, 9 to 15. When Elijah was taken by wild wind to heaven and he dropped this mantle, the Bible said, Elisha took the mantle. He used his hands to grab the mantle. He used his hand when he got to River Jordan to roll the mantle and to smite the Jordan. And then say, where's the Lord God of Elijah? He used his hand profitably. He used his hand in the correct way. And you know the result. He became 
someone that other children of prophets came to buy down to. Your hands can become a conductor of the power of the Almighty God. For example, in Mark chapter 16, from verse 17 to 18, Mark 16, from verse 17 to 18, the Almighty God says, as part of the signs that we follow those who believe him, that they will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Your hands can conduct the power of God into the life of the sick so that the sick can become healed. God, God is not saying that you'll be the healer. He says, you lay your hands that they can feel, and then my hand that they cannot see will be laid on your hands, and the power will flow. But what kind of hands do you think that can be laid on the sick and get the sick healed? It cannot be dirty hands. It cannot be unclean hands. What kind of wire is used to conduct electricity? Pure wire. They don't use iron wire to conduct electricity. There was a time they were using copper wire because that's the, that was the, the element that was very pure compared to iron in those days. But then they moved on from that when they discovered there is fiberglass. And they've discovered that the purer the conductor, the more easily the current will flow. What kind of hands are your hands? Can they conduct the power of God freely? It's not everyone who can lay hands on the sick and see the sick healed. What's the problem? The problem is a matter of the hands. How clean are your hands? And then another thing about your hands... It's found in Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 10. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 10. The Bible says, whatever your hands find to do, do it with all your might. In other words, how diligent you are is related to your hands. Are you a lazy person? Are you a hardworking person? Are you someone that God will give the opportunity to bear rule? The Bible says the diligent hand shall bear rule. How are you using your hand? Do you use your hand to play all day long? Or you use the hand to do something precious for the Almighty God? Think about it. Is your hand reaching out for something that is wrong? Or is reaching out to transform other lives? But the most important thing about your hands is actually to be found in Psalm 73 from verse 22 to 24. Psalm 73, 22 to 24. David was talking about how he could be a foolish fellow. He knows he's no, not very worthy of anything. He said, but one thing he is sure of, that the Almighty God will hold him by the hand and receive him into glory. Ah. If we read Psalm 24 from verse 7 to 10, Psalm 24 from verse 7 to 10, you will discover that when we are talking about entering into glory, 
There is a door there called the everlasting door. That door does not open to just anyone. It opens only to the Lord Jesus Christ. And <laughs> even the Lord of hosts himself will answer questions when he gets to that door. My daddy used to tell me, that's my spiritual daddy, son, when a man dies in Christ, an angel will come and take him and carry him to heaven. But when the angel gets to a certain level, he will tell you, I can't go further than this. I get too close to God, the glory of God will wipe me out. He said that's why the angels who stand before him cover their faces with wings, cover their feet, cover so that the glory of God will not wipe them out. He said the angel will say, this is how far I can go. And then the Son of God himself will come and take you from there on and lead you all the way to where the Father is. David said it. Oh, when I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for thou art with me, because I know you will receive me to glory, holding my hand. You think God is going to hold a dirty hand? You think that the almighty God, whose eye cannot even behold sin, will hold a hand that is unclean and lead him into glory? You cry to God today and say, Lord God Almighty, from this day onward, don't let my hand touch anything unclean. Anything that I've been toying with that is not going to allow you to hold my hand and receive me to glory. Father, let me put an end to it today. Now, as for those of you who are not yet born again, it's not even your hands alone that are dirty. It's your entire body. So you better come to Jesus Christ now and ask him to please wash you clean in his blood. Ask him to save your soul. <laughs> because there is a place you can't go on your own except the Lord leads you in. So if you want to give your life to Jesus Christ, please bow your heads now. Cry to him for salvation. Ask that his blood will wash you completely clean from head to toe as I pray with you just now. My Father and my God, I want to thank you once again for your word. I want to thank you for the grace to say the truth as it is. And I want to thank you for those who have decided to surrender their life to you today. Father, please receive them. Save their souls. Let your blood wash away every trace of sin in their lives. And from now on, Father, keep them pure. Keep them holy so that together all of us will be able to enter into your kingdom as you hold our hand. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Now I'm rejoicing with those of you who have given your life to Jesus Christ today. I can assure you that the blood of Jesus cleanses from all sins. That even if you are to die today now, you will make it to heaven. But I will advise you to go to the pastor in the Redeemed Christian Church of God nearest to you and ask him, what do I do next? I will be hearing good news from you in Jesus' name. And one day we will meet in heaven. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We want to thank God for the life of our Father our daddy Gio, for that wonderful word of God. And I believe in every area that we need to write it to, the Lord will give us the grace in Jesus' mighty name. However, many of us have been robbing God with our offering. And I believe with the word of God that we have had, we are going to make amend and our financial life will turn for better in Jesus' mighty name. So on this note, wherever you are all over the world, can you please dip your hands into your wallet, into your purses, and bring out your asset as well. Do transfer. The account detail will be shown online. Kindly transfer and don't owe God. 
so that you not continue to rest it till the Lord will bless us in Jesus' name. The choir will lead us as we take our offering. Hallelujah. Shall we please pray? Everlasting Father, we want to thank you for the power in the word again. Thank you for the life of our Father in the law, who is never tired of telling us the old truth and nothing but the truth. Take all the glory in the name of Jesus. Daddy, we refuse to be robbers in your vineyard. Therefore, we are giving our offering again today. Please accept us. Accept the offering. Use us for your glory. Use our offering as well for your glory in the mighty name of Jesus. Because we care to give, bless us indeed, and whatsoever we lay our hands upon, prosper in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for hearing us. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen. Let somebody shout another hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Let's begin to worship the King of Kings. Let's appreciate him for the wonderful word the Lord has passed across to us again today. Let's thank him for the, 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 for the 
our, our grace that we have received through his word today. Let's bless the name of the Lord for this wonderful word that God is sending to us to enlighten us, to empower us. Father, we say to you alone be glory, to you be alone be honor. Let's thank God again for our Father in the Lord. Let's thank God for the grace of God upon his life and for this wonderful anointing upon his life to release God's word into our life. Let us thank God for our daddy. Let's bless the name of the Lord for his life. Let's thank God for his grace. Father, I say our thanks in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, we pray. Our Heavenly Father, we want to bless your holy name. We thank you, Lord, for another wonderful time in your presence. We thank you, Lord, for the great word that you have sent to us today. We thank you, Jehovah, for opening our inner eyes. We well, thank you, Lord, Jehovah Nisi, for the mercy, for your grace, for your anointing, for your power upon our life. That, Daddy, I say our thanks in the name of Jesus. Everlasting Father, we pray in the name that is above every other name, that the word you have sent to us today, Lord, will not fall on empty ground in the name of Jesus. Your word will perform what is sent to do in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray, O oh God, that our hands will not lead us to hell in the name of Jesus. We pray, Almighty Father, all that that we have used our hand to do in the past that's contrary to your way. Lord, you will have mercy on us and we pray, Lord, the grace to restitute, the grace never to touch such a thing again, give unto us in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray, Father, that you will sanctify our hand as for now, that our hand will be a hand of healing, with the hand of miracle in the mighty name of jesus we pray father for our father in the law that you have used for us lord almighty renew his strength in the name of jesus continue to increase him in your grace in your anointing in the mighty name of jesus don't let him go weary nor tired in the mighty name of jesus we pray, my Father and my God, that, O oh God, your word in the mouth of our daddy will never run dry in the name of Jesus. And we pray, O oh God, that in your kingdom, both our daddy and all of us and everyone listening that have uh, watched this program, you will not miss the kingdom in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray.